crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a video as part of the New and Snook Designs August Release Blog Hop. So you can be sure to check out the blog link in the video description below to join in on the hop for your chance to win. For today's card, I'm going to be showcasing the Beautiful Leaves Stamp and Coordinating Dies. This is part of a line from New and Snook Designs including Beautiful Blossoms, Beautiful Blizzard, and Beautiful Wings, all in the same style that looks like the paper quilling on the stamps. And, but it gives you that effect with a much easier technique of simply stamping as opposed to curling all the paper yourself. These have been very popular. They're some of my favorite most used stamps from New and Snook, so I'm glad they added a fall one to the line. I'm starting with some craft paper and I'm going to be using solid washi tape. Recently I showed you how you could use patterned washi tape to make your own patterned piece of paper and die cut with it, but I thought that it might be a little bit more common to have access to solid pattern or solid washi tape and so I thought it would be cool to show you how to create your own pattern with it so you could use that technique. When I was adding the tape, I was planning on die cutting some of the leaves and using those die cuts to create a card, but I found that I was able to use both the positive and the negative die cuts. I'm trying to create a stripe pattern, and because the washi tape is translucent, you can sort of see the colors through each other, and so it allows you to add some interest and some uh, look of extra stripes. It's a little hard to see on video, but when you add one of the lighter colors on top of the darker colors, it changes it a little bit and so it definitely creates some interesting patterns there. I'm trying to be mostly straight with my lines but it's not perfect and that's going to be okay because it's you know kind of a sort of handmade pattern here but you could use the grid lines on your mat or, um, or work surface if you have them to create a more straight look. So I'm going to lay the die cuts from the, um, the stamp set on top in a way to create some interesting leaves. When I saw that the leftover bit looked really cool, I decided that I would use it to make its own card. Because originally I intended just to use the cut leaves. But um, I had to trim down that uh, die cut piece because there was not perfect placement of the washi tape. Since I didn't intend to use it, I didn't extend the washi tape all the way to the edge or past the edge. And so I would recommend that you create about a card size panel and extend the washi tape all the way when you try out this technique because a lot of times that negative is going to be really nice as well. And so I just used a little bit of craft card stock to extend the piece. And even if yours was complete, you might want something to show through, such as a different color of card stock or uh, maybe some vellum would look really pretty as well and you'd have something to adhere it down to. Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of multimedia mat for those little uh, in between edges and that holds it down really securely. Once I have the panel completely secured to the background paper, I am ready to do some stamping through the die cut pieces. But I knew that I wanted to have the sentiment in one of them and the leaves in the other. So I thought before I stamp anything else, I need to decide where the sentiment's going to go because I need a leaf that will be big enough to hold one of the sentiments from the set. Because this is a fall card, this is why I'm choosing to work with craft card stock as a base. I usually use white as my neutral and stamp in black ink. But to go with the fall theme, I'm going to use the craft card stock and some brown ink. This is the sepia ink and it's an archival. I decided that since the leaves would fit perfectly inside their die cut areas, I could just stamp right through there. But I thought it might be a little bit tricky to do that with acrylic blocks, so I'm going to lay down the stamps inside of the die cut areas and then use my misty to pick them up. However, you could do it with the um, with just simple stamp acrylic blocks. This just makes it a little bit more precise, but because they're clear stamps you can see through them. And you shouldn't have any trouble getting good pressure um, even though you're stamping through a little bit of a layer there with the cardstock. I'm going to stamp it twice just because I can with my misty to make sure that my impression is perfect and then I will continue to line up the stamps until there is a leaf pattern inside all the die cut areas. Now my original intention was to use those washi tape leaves that I created by die cutting and so I want to create a pattern paper to put them on. 
I couldn't find a pattern paper in my stash that went perfectly and I have quite a few background stamps from Impression Obsession that create simple pattern papers. So I just picked one of those with a really simple pattern and again used the sepia ink. I just sort of spread it all over and I, when I apply ink to a background stamp, sometimes I actually like to wipe the pad across the stamp. Usually you want to use more of a tapping motion, but it's when you're trying to cover a hard air, uh, a large area, that can take some time. And so I find that if I use mostly swiping and a little bit of tapping, that that actually works a little bit faster and makes sure that I have uh, better coverage. When you place the cardstock onto the rubber stamp, I find that to be a little bit easier than bringing the rubber stamp to the cardstock. However, there are large mounts that allow you to do that, and so would the Misty. But I just like to bring my cardstock and place it on top of the rubber stamp and use a brayer to make sure that everything is secure. I added in one plain craft cardstock leaf in order to be able to stamp the sentiment from the set. Now, I'm putting these on some dark brown cardstock as a card base. When you do that, you're probably going to want to put a piece of white cardstock on the inside so that you can write your message more easily. The reason that I chose to do this is because when I placed the craft card stock on the white, I just thought it was too much of a contrast. I really wanted to keep with the fall colors of the red, yellow, orange, and browns. So it worked out. And I'm going to place this centered on the cardstock base. This is a little bit thinner than the cardstock bases I normally use. So again, having that extra piece of cardstock in the middle where you write your sentiment is going to give it a little bit more weight. And that is going to be it for my two cards today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorial tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have some more tutorials this week featuring the new releases from Newton's Nook Designs, so be sure to check back each day for your chance to participate, see a tutorial, and win. And you can check out in the video description below links to the products that I used, as well as to my blog to join in, and my social media. Thanks for watching. Bye.